Welcome to House Talk, with videos that'll provide maintenance tips unique to Trilogy at Vistancia Homes, with your host, Doug Bowman. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be tackling two of the most misunderstood topics at Trilogy, your wired and wireless internet systems. The first video will be about your wired internet system, and the second video will be about your wireless system, most commonly called Wi-Fi. I recommend you watch both of them to understand how one supports the other. Okay, let's get started with the wired system. There are several companies and several ways to receive an internet signal in your house. The primary companies in Trilogy are Zona with their fiber optic cables and Cox with their coax cables. If you're a customer receiving Cox's cable TV package, you're most likely a Cox internet customer as well. If you've cut the cord and have moved to streaming your shows, you're most likely a Zona customer. This video will focus only on the internet services they provide. If your internet is provided through a satellite provider, I'm not going to go through that today. Each company has to install a device at your house to translate that company's signal to a common signal your components can understand. Most people know these devices as modems, which modulate and demodulate the signals, thus the name modem. The output of this device is transmitted on an Ethernet cable. Even the oldest houses in Trilogy have Ethernet cables routed in their walls. While most of these cables may have originally been installed to support a landline telephone connection, they can easily be rewired to support an internet feed throughout your house. Essentially, any phone jack in your house can be turned into a network port. I'll be discussing how to do that rewiring in video too. For now, just know that the option exists if you need to relocate devices like routers, printers, and computers around your house. These Ethernet cables in our walls have huge bandwidth capacities. The cable's only limit is how much bandwidth you've agreed to purchase. The Internet providers will clamp down on your speed based on your service contract. Okay, it's definition time. I said bandwidth. What is it? It's the maximum allowable amount of data that can be sent from one point to another in a certain period of time. It's expressed in bits per second, not bytes. When visualizing bandwidth, it may be helpful to think of a network connection as a pipe and each bit of data as a grain of sugar. Let's say you want to stream a movie. We'll pretend this cup of sugar is about three to four minutes of a movie. If you pour the cup of sugar into a smaller pipe, it'll take longer for the sugar to flow through it. If you pour the same amount of sugar through a larger pipe, the sugar will finish flowing through the tube much faster. That said, downloading data, like a movie or photo, will finish much faster when you have a high bandwidth connection rather than a low bandwidth connection. As an example, a Netflix high definition movie stream requires about 5 to 8 megabits of bandwidth, whereas a 4K stream requires about 20 megabits. If you don't have this much available bandwidth, buffering can occur and you will get the dreaded clock. The first step is to determine how much bandwidth you really need because we all use our Wi-Fi differently and so many things can affect the outcome. I'm going to have you take a quick test using a bandwidth calculator. It's really easy and the results may surprise you. I took the test and came up with needing a bandwidth of 47 megabits, but I'm a heavy user. The key thing here for you is that you're not buying less than what you really need because that can have a huge impact on your performance. You can either pause the video and take the test now or do it at the end. I'll show you this link again later on in the references. Now let's see how much bandwidth you're buying. You can check this out by looking at your internet bill to see what download speed you are purchasing. Like I said, I'm purchasing 100 megabits per second, which is double what I need. I would say the average Trilogy resident can get by with half of that and maybe even less, but be forewarned. Internet providers will always try to sell you a higher rate package. By the way, depending on your provider, you may see two numbers on your bill, like 50 slash 25 megabits. What that means is that you have 50 megabits when downloading information and 25 megabits when uploading information. Don't worry if the upload number is smaller since most of what you do is downloading information from the internet, not uploading. As I started to say, these companies deliver an internet feed to your house. That feed usually ends up in your media panel somewhere in your house, although your system may have been modified over the years and terminates somewhere else. My media panel is in my closet and looks like this. Usually a dedicated cable 
leaves the media panel and runs to your modem or router. Cox's feed will be connected to either a modem or a motor-router combination device. The Zona feed will just be connected to a router since they don't use a modem. If someone has installed a modem or a router inside your media panel, you need to be aware this can be a safety concern due to the heat that can be generated by these devices and is also one of the worst places you can install a router. Low to the ground, behind extra walls, and even in a metal box. We'll be discussing in more detail where to put a router in the next video. Either of these devices, a modem or router, have several Ethernet ports available in the rear that can be used to connect devices that are stationary, like printers, desktops, computers, or routers. Pretty much any device that has an Ethernet port can be hardwired to the internet even if it's capable of supporting a Wi-Fi connection. Wired connections have fewer problems than Wi-Fi just because there are fewer components and fewer choke points. Oops, there's a new term, so it must be definition time again. A choke point is a location or a device that has maxed out and cannot pass the amount of data that's being asked for. This can be because of the age of the hardware or version of the firmware. Every system has a choke point, but the goal is that the choke point is only limited by the amount of bandwidth you're buying. You can always buy more bandwidth, but it won't help you if your desktop computer is 15 years old. You can do a speed test on your network to see what your upload and download bandwidth speeds are at any time. I like to use the one named Speed Test by Okla at www.speedtest.net. The ones sponsored by Zona and Cox tend to favor their closest servers, which may not be real-world conditions. Remember, when you're doing a speed test, either connect your computer to a wired port on a modem or router, or if you're using a wireless device, move within a few feet of the router. The farther away you are from the router can affect your speed test results. I'm demoing the Oculus speed test here. It's helpful to do a speed test on your own before calling the internet provider. If you're having problems and the speed test is normal, you may save yourself the cost of a service call. You should do several tests throughout the day. Write down the times and the dates. If the speed is regularly low after several days, you should call the provider with your results and ask them to check it out. Zona lets you send a service request from their support page of their website. I recently was having slow service at night, and I submitted a service request and they replaced the device within 24 hours. Not bad. Items that can impact performance of a wired network are primarily the modem and the computer. A router can also impact your wired network as well if it's being used as a connection point for your wired devices. Some providers, like Cox, rent you a modem or they'll rent you a modem-router combo for a monthly fee. But you can also buy your own and avoid the monthly fees. Because Zona runs a fiber optic cable to each house, they're a little different. They use an optical network terminal instead of a modem, but you still need a router whether you rent it or buy one yourself. No matter who owns the modem and router, they can still be the source of the problem. Either device can be a choke point by being too old or outdated. Modems and routers should have a speed rating equal or greater to the download speed that you have with your service provider. If you own your own modem and it's 10 years old, you should replace it for sure. Contact your provider and ask them for some recommendations for a modem that's compatible with their system. We'll talk more about router replacements in part two of the Wi-Fi video. One last note on Zona. Recently when Wired bought Zona, they made some changes to their signals. Some older optical network terminals struggle to keep up with this new signal. If you use Zona and your speed tests have inconsistent results, you should have them check it out. Regarding your computer, a computer's processor speed indicates how fast your computer runs and is measured in megahertz, or even better, gigahertz. Comcast recommends a minimum of 1.8 gigahertz for Mac computers and 3 gigahertz for PCs using Windows. Memory, or RAM, is the storage space your computer uses to store and read data. The more memory the computer has, the faster it can open and run programs. You should have at least 4 gigabytes of memory for all computers, and the more the better. Whether your computer is hardwired or Wi-Fi capable, you might consider an upgrade to your computer if your numbers are less than these. If you don't stream movies and play games on your computer, you may be able to hold out for a few more years. 
you should be able to view your computer specifications in the About This Mac screen or under the System tab on the Windows Home screen. So let's review what we've talked about. Take the bandwidth calculator test to determine your needs. Compare your bandwidth test results to what you're paying for. Understand your installed hardware. Regularly perform speed tests to verify your bandwidth. Document the speed tests and notify your provider if the speed tests are underperforming. And evaluate hardware age and performance. The reason I wanted you to watch this video on wired networks before watching the wireless Wi-Fi video is because in order for a home network to work at its very best, every device in the network must be working properly to achieve the best performance. It's easy to blame the internet provider, and even worse, pay more to increase your bandwidth when the problem may be something completely different. As I said, the next video will discuss the wireless Wi-Fi components. Even a Wi-Fi system relies on your internet provider, a modem, or in Zono's case, the optical network terminal, to operate, so I'm glad you stuck around for the topic. And as always, if you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure to like this video.